Okay, YouTube, uh, my shame is great. Uh, I have been remiss in my garden updates because I've been focused elsewhere. I would like to uh, start the update by thanking uh, I Am Palas, uh, an aquatic fish guy, um, YouTuber, who um, ag agreed to send me uh, for no cost whatsoever but the kindness from his own heart, um, the show tank. Uh, and it arrived, and I have not yet put it in, but there are the pieces. It's a good, hardy, uh, reinforced, I don't know, wow, 10 mil, 20 mil plastic, uh, fiberglass, poly, something or another, with these uh, Schedule 40 rigid pipe, and of course these, uh, whatever the hell these are. And it's all seamed out. Okay, let's move on. Uh, the garden. Uh, successes. No failures. Catastrophic failure. Um, it actually was a test. I was trying to determine how many or if there were any trace elements present in the gravel or creek bed rock, river rock, versus hydratons or something phony or inorganic. Uh, even though lava rocks are organic, they don't really have any properties to them. They're neutral. Um, so, as evidenced by the lettuce not taking off and remaining a light green in color, um, it's my contention that the water does not support enough trace elements to be able to provide a decent base. Um, or at least the burlap won't provide that uh, to absorb nutrients and latch onto them, I'm guessing. Um, okay, well let's just do growth. Okay, I'm going to have good growth this year because last year I didn't even get these plants, these beds really set in until like the end of May. And we're coming up on the end of May and I'm already here. So that tells me my vines and everything is just going to just jump craziness. Okay, well I've run a string down the middle. My snow peas are starting to crawl on top of themselves and I don't really have anything tall enough for them to climb yet, if they're going to climb. I'm not for sure if they're a squatty bush or if they're a pole bean or whatever, but snow peas are probably just about getting past their prime now. But I don't know what to do, so I don't know anything about them. All I know is that they're absorbing nutrients so that the, the fish can have clean water. Um, these are my lima beans, which is just one bean, and I think it's a vine also. Um, these are the um, brandy wines that were given to me. Oh, no, I'm sorry. These are ch uh, ch uh, cherry tomatoes, the baby tomatoes. Um, am I zoomed in? What the hell's going on here? Oh, sorry about this, guys. No, I'm good. Okay. And anyhow, they've taken off. Um, a snow pea that I'm trying to run up this direction. So they had two rows of snow peas. One close to the tomato and one to run down the center or that set of tomatoes. But they're not going to catch up because I, I buried them on such an angle. And I think we went over that last time. So let me show you um, what happens when you bury them. Um, and I'm sure many know this because it's an old trick. But uh, let's see, what's going to be a good one? This one will be a good one, I think. Let me unbury this. You see those roots? Oh, wait a minute, maybe not. Those are all roots. Okay, they weren't there before. Okay? Uh, my camera's not going to do it. It's not good enough for you to see. But there are little bumps all at the base of most tomato plants. Those bumps would be roots if they were buried. Again, let me show right here. Maybe this will show pretty well. Oh. Some wasp. Somebody in there having fun. Can you see those roots or no? Ah, well, it doesn't matter. At any rate, they do that. So when they fall over in nature because they get heavy, the tomatoes fall on the ground and the plants continue to uh, root along as a vine. Okay, so that's it. Uh, okay, four minutes. I'm dragging ass. All right, that's just about it. Oh, oh, true trace trace elements um, and trace nutrients. Um, manganese and uh, trace calciums and zinc and th those type of things. I am going to go with the Ware Rabbit Company um, makes a um, a salt lick. 
um, or various salt licks that contain all these uh, trace elements for rabbits. Now uh, I just have to figure out how many to use to provide the trace elements required to give uh, a full balanced meal for the plants. That is some sort of pepper. I can't remember if it's a banana pepper or a yellow pepper, but uh, the peppers are doing quite well. Um, I have had a trouble with the, because of course there's no insulation on the bottom of this, the warm days and cool nights cause a a discoloration. Now once the nights start getting closer to the day temperatures, uh, this will go away. So I anticipate this all ending. Um, the uh, basil is taken off fairly well. Uh, I have harvested most of the um, collards. Uh, I'm going to let a little bunch go to seed. I've got those over there that are going to go to seed. Um, the uh, the mustard greens are beautiful. They've been quite tasty. Um, little flowers are starting to come up. Uh, stray tomatoes. Um, more peppers. Um, I think those are yellow. Yellow bonnies or yellow, some sort of yellow peppers. Oh, uh, no, wait a minute. The name is... The name is... Um, California, it's a California Wanderer, um, and these are, um, I believe, banana pepper, banana pepper, banana pepper, banana pepper, banana pepper, but I'm not for sure. Uh, this is a uh, pitiful looking watermelon, and I have got three more watermelons over in the nursery. I don't think I'm going to get to those today. Uh, let's see. Another failure, I do not have the pressure, or let me rephrase that, I have the pressure to run this tiered system that I was going to do where I delivered the water down at each spoke. But for me to acquire that type of pressure on these lines to stagger it all the way down for the number of spokes as I may determine in the future, causes this bed to flood. Okay, and I have no way around that. So I had to rethink and went with individual deployments and I can tee off at the bottom down there and run uh, water up. Okay, well, it's kind of a look. Um, like I said, things are beginning to really take off now because the daytime temperatures and nighttime temperatures are becoming more aligned. Something I found of interest, I don't know if you can see this, this is where I overfeed. And the feed gets thrown up into the bed. Well, what I've noticed is ant, ant personality, ant stuff, ant traits, I guess you call them, are to capture aphids and little bugs and take them up and store them on leaves. And then the aphids come out and um, start to feed. They get fat um, and then the ants eat them. So they like harvest their own food. Well, I've noticed the ants are taking, see my camera sucks, they're taking the overfeed up and storing it as if it were the aphids and little bugs that they plan on hatching and then when the eggs hatch they eat they get tender they get fat the ants eat them so they're like farming themselves it's a symbiotic relationship and it looks like I'm just about out of time and I don't know if I've been screaming but I'm, I'm hearing that uh, I'm hearing Alex in the background and I'm also hearing the water so okay that's about it um, I've been preoccupied with the uh, with other things so it's been difficult for me to get out here and plus I wanted to show I wanted to get some warm nights these are uh, this is a, some sort of pole bean I can't remember um, and I'm hoping it will climb this rail just like last year and instead of having 15 cucumber plants that tore me up last year because I had literally I don't know 80 100 cucumbers that's an exaggeration but over the course of the year, I'd say I had 80 or 100 cucumbers, and I gave them all away. So this time I went with one cucumber plant because I know it's going to give me 30. So 
30 cucumbers will be fine, especially if I take them smaller. I might take them smaller and make them pickles or something. Okay, let's see, or whatever the hell you do to them. I went over that. Oh, the fish are eating like pigs. Um, again, I think they also need the trace elements. Oh, wow.